in this video we are going to you know talk about tips and tricks which you can use to solve this java oca exam okay so i went through multiple udemy courses and i solved many mcqs and i created a cheat sheet so this is the part 4 where i'm going to talk about or share my cheat sheet with you i have other three parts and they are not interlinked like it you can watch the part 4 also they just have too much content so i've divided them into parts so this is the last moment revision video if you want to know more about the other parts you can reach out to me on my social handles and you know ask me if you have any doubts all the topics that we are going to discuss are related to the exam mcqs itself we are not going to talk about anything else but just we are going to concentrate on exam and i will also allow you to you know select what is the right option in the mcq we can we will also discuss how we you can cross out the wrong ones so i'll try to give a brief explanation of all the topics and i hope you enjoy this video so let's talk about uh, you know the first thing that we are going to discuss is how to access a variable that is protected so we know that we can have a private variable we can have a default variable we can have public and we have protected so over here i have taken an example where i have a class a that has protected variable b that is 5 you can consider this variable to be a int okay and then we have class b which extends class a so over here class b will extend class a and over here we have created object of class a since b extends a we can create object of a within b now what if i want to print this particular variable so over here i have you know taken few examples like system dot out dot print ln object dot b what i am trying to do is i am using my reference variable to call the object like but over here this won't work because the variable that we have is protected so we cannot use a reference variable to call it so what we have to do is we have to use this or super keyword this will basically what it will do is please call b from this particular reference variable okay or super will basically print b because super always calls the members of parent class so what exactly you have to remember is that if a specific variable is protected and if you want to call it from another class that extends that particular class where the variable has been defined you can use this or you can use super you cannot directly use reference variable to call it if you know we didn't had protected over here in that case we can use this reference variable to call the object or call the variable how to perform encapsulation of a variable in many mcqs they can check your knowledge of encapsulation they can ask you to define what exactly is encapsulation in java so basically encapsulation is a method in which we hide the data from other classes like if we have a string that says hello and if you do not want it to share with other classes you can basically hide it with encapsulation so how exactly this encapsulation works if you want to make a variable encapsulated make sure that the variable is private so over here i have a string variable that name and that particular value i have to protect so i will convert that thing to private and i will provide a public method to read it public get name which will return its value so whenever some other class they have to you know find out the value they can only perform read operation on it they cannot modify my string so my string name will be forever diya because the public get method can only read it it cannot modify it will only return its value it won't do anything else so whenever you rem uh, whenever you know uh, encapsulation question comes you just have to remember one thing one the the variable should be private two you have to provide a public method it's a very 
a common pattern which I you know saw within the MCQs that they are just trying to make sure that you know that the variable is supposed to be private and the method that is calling the variable is supposed to be public and this you know particular method will only return the value it's basically just read operation okay now moving ahead to substring so for example if you have a string a b c d e f okay so this is your string and what will be the indexes index always starts from zero so index will be something like this now in substring they will check if you know how exactly this method works uh, there can be a, a method in which you know there is no result there can be a method in which you get an exception so they just want to know if you know exactly how indexes and substrings and strings are stored so over here uh, over here it is asking me to save s with substring of s itself that's 1 to 4 okay so always remember that 1 comma 4 this will be included and this particular value will always be excluded from the result so this is the end point this is not included like it will go from 1 to 3 only 4 will never be included it will be the end point like over here you have to stop so over here my string substring says 1 1 comma 4 so it will start from here and it will end at 3 so over here in s b c d will be saved okay the last this is not included up till 4 then over here we have s dot substring 4 comma 4 now you when you will see both of them equal you will get confused that uh, only e will be present or what in such cases where the starting point and ending point are equal in this case nothing is saved the this particular will be a empty string okay moving forward we have 4 comma 1 over here the start is greater than the ending one okay 4 is greater than 1 so in this case you will get x error or exception okay so this is something you have to make a point this is something you have to make a point and over here you can see that our index ends at 5 and we are trying to go with 11 over here again you will get an exception out of bound exception so what you have to remember is that whenever you see something like this this is included this is not included up till 4 like it will stop at 4 okay if you see both of them equal it will not throw an exception a empty string will be returned if you see the starting that is greater than the ending exception if you see that we are trying to uh, put invalid index again exception so these are the only four things you have to remember about substring when giving java oca exam now let's talk about byte range so all the primitive data types which we have they have a range but for this particular exam the favorite range that you will be asked is of byte so you have to remember that byte range is from 128 to 127 okay so over here i have an example that is i have a class that is hello world then public static void main string args a perfect main method then i have a byte variable check whose value is 100 so 100 comes between 128 negative 128 to 127 okay so this particular value works for me again no problem then i'm trying to pass a byte within switch again we can pass byte within switch again this statement ha has also no issue then i have case 100 okay now over here what we have to make sure that whatever that we are passing to switch all the cases included 
must be within range of that okay so all the cases that you try to create they should lie between 120 negative 128 to 127 so over here we have case 100 and we are trying to print high and then we break it then we have case 200 so over here this case 200 will give us error over here you can see that there is a red line between two below 200 so this does not works so again this is a very known question in java oca that you have to remember uh, you just have to remember the byte range because this is the known mcq that you have to you know put cases between them only like if you have case 700 this won't work in case if you are passing a byte variable then you can have case 550 which won't work negative 175 this will also not work you just have to remember these things since we are talking about switch case i also want to highlight uh, one more popular question in exam that is duplicate cases so what they will do is they will give you a switch case which looks perfect and they will check if you are well aware or not that you cannot have duplicate cases within switch case so again we have a public class works fine public static void main string array args perfect then we have a byte check that is 100 okay now we are trying to pass byte within switch which is allowed then we have case 100 then again we have case 100 then we have case 120 so we know that byte ranges from 128 to 127 so 100 is fine 120 is also fine and 100 is also fine but over here if you notice we have duplicate case okay um yeah case 100 and case 100 so this won't work so you just have to remember you cannot have duplicate cases that's it now since we are again talking about switch cases what all things you can pass within switch case in switch case you can pass both primitive data type and wrapper classes okay you can pass char you can also pass character it works you can pass byte and byte it you can pass short and short this is your primitive data type and this is your wrapper class you can pass int and integer correct you can pass enum but this particular thing is not in exam okay then you can also pass string you cannot pass boolean so in this particular slide what do you have to remember you cannot pass boolean within switch case so if you see a mcq in which they are trying to pass a boolean value within switch case this is your hint that there is a error or exception okay now over here we have a int array that is of size 2 so how exactly array is created so i told my java to give me an array which has size 2 so 0 1 2 size array then i'm trying to so this is fine then i'm trying to add 5 at fifth zeroth index so it will add 5 then I'm asking it to add 7 at first index, it will add 7. Then I'm asking it to add 8 at 2. So there is no, you know, one more index present. So over here we get array out of, array index out of bound exception. So just make sure that if you see 2, you have to remember that index is start from 0. Now over here, uh what is the issue like the array is of size 2 and we are trying to add 5 and 7 again so what is exactly the issue the issue is you cannot um you know assign 
val size of an array on left hand side like over here we gave the size to the array on right hand side okay but you cannot have your size over here so in the definition itself we are trying to give the size which is wrong so just remember this thing then let's talk about args so what exactly is args args are command line argument which we pass to our java application at the time of compilation so what exactly how it works uh, you compile your java class like you use this command java c hello world dot java okay and after that you use java and your class name and from here where your class name ends your args starts so how exactly this 1 2 and 3 will be saved this 1 2 and 3 will be saved in three different places as strings okay 0 1 2 and when you are trying to print the second 3 will be printed so this is how exactly you have to remember uh, you have to remember the syntax you have to remember from where the argument start from where it will be saved what will happen if you know it would have been like this java hello world and there would have been double inverted commas one two three in this case it won't be saved like this in this case it will be saved on zeroth element like one string so what you have to remember that how exactly arguments are saved within string how exactly the indexing takes place and what will happen if you see double inverted com you know inverted commas then let's talk about primitive okay so uh, see we have two things we have to remember that uh, primitive data type and second thing you have to remember is wrapper classes so let me take an example of int so int is your primitive data type and integer is a wrapper class so over here you can create variables and over here you create objects so variables can take default value like 0 0, 0.0 .0 or false but when it comes to objects the default value is null okay so whenever you try to create an object they see that it is a class they do not see it if it is integer if it is byte or if it is short so whenever you are trying to print the default variable of an array you have to think is it a primitive data type or is it a wrapper class depending upon it you have to take a call that it will be null value or it will be the primitive data type default value okay so let's check the code so over here we have public static void main string args that is correct then we are trying to create a array which has primitive data type double so which has size 2 again correct and we are trying to add 0 and first so in this case what will java do is java will create a array of type double and it will give the default values the primitive default values since it is a primitive data type so over here this is the 0 and this is 1 when you will add both of them you will get 0 comma 0 now if I take the same example and if over here I will try to deal with a wrapper class so in this case what exactly will Java do is Java will create a array of type double okay and it will give it the size that we are you know have given in definition or declaration and it will 
add the default values. Since double is a wrapper class, the default values will be null. Over here, it was a primitive data type. The default values were 0, 0.0. So in this case, when you will try to, you know, read the values within the memory location, it will return null and Java will give you null pointer exception. Now let's talk about object for garbage collection. The first thing that you have to remember is that whenever a object points to null, in that case, the object is eligible for garbage collection. So for example, you have integer a that points to 5. Then you have integer b that points to 7. Then you have integer c that points to 8. Now what you do is you do c equals to a. That means wherever a is pointing, c will also point there. So in this case, what will happen? c will point to 5 and over here, this connection will go away. So over here, we have one null object. Then you do b equals to a. Then over here, this will also point to this and this will be a null object. So in this case, both of these objects will be eligible for garbage collection. So this is how garbage collection works. Now let's talk about main method. Again, it is a very known question in which they will check if you know how exactly we can, you know, define main method. So first rule that you have to remember is that return type and method name. These both things are best friends. You cannot, you know, uh, replace them. Like always the return type should be present on left side of method name. So over here, let me check one by one. Over here is my return type near my method name. Correct. Do I have public and static both? Correct. First rule, return type should be present on left hand side of method name second thing public should be present third thing public uh, sorry static should be present fourth rule is that you can interchange the places of public and static so over here void and main that is return type and main are far away so this won't work in this case the public is missing so this won't work in this case, everything is fine. I have public, static, void main, but over here I'm not creating array of strings. In this case, the main method won't be able to accept the arguments which we will pass using command line. So this will also not work. Then uh, over here, we have public, static, void main. Other than ARGS, we have A. So this will work. The value of uh, the array of strings can be anything. Over here, we have named it as A. So this works fine. Now let us talk about list.remove. So remove is overloaded method. It takes both int and over here I'm talking about collections. Okay. So in collections, how exactly you will get questions is that first they will add few objects in a collection and then they will try to remove them and they will check if you know how exactly it's removed. So for example, if you have D as then you have uh, F, then you have A, then you have C. 0, 1, 2, 3 and all this is present at a list. Okay, so uh, they will try to see if you know how to remove them. So remove is an overloaded method. It takes both int and object. So if you will, whenever you will pass an int within remove, it will look for the indexes. Okay, and whenever you will pass object, it will check if that object has been removed or not. So what will happen in case of list.remove0? So in this case, if I am passing an object, what exactly will this method do? This method will check if this particular object has been removed and it will return boolean. So if it has been removed, it will give true. If it has not been removed, in that case, it will give false. And what exactly will happen if you will give 65? So in this case, the method will directly go to 65th index. 
and it will look for the object that is present on 65th index. Even if your list or the collection is of integer wrapper class, in that case also it will never look for 65th, um, you know, object. It will always look for the 65th index. So whenever you deal with list dot remove method within solving the MCQs, you have to particularly be uh, very cautious when you deal with integer double or you know all the numbers that are present within the collections so if you uh, if you you know pass list dot remove 100 it won't remove the object 100 it will go to the 100th index and it will try to remove the object that is present on that index in many cases what will happen is that that particular index won't be there so in this case it will give you out of bound exception Now let's talk about string dot equals string buffer. So dot equals is a method which checks if both of the objects value are equal. So normally both of them should be compatible. So what will happen if you compare a integer dot equals double object? In this case it will give you an error. It will be like both of the objects are not compatible. So the again a very known MCQ within Java OCS exam is that they will give you a code in which they will check if you know exactly what string dot equal string buffer object will return. So let us see the example. Over here we have public class hello world. Public static void main string ARGS. Then we have string A that has value hello then we have string buffer b again which has value hello so if you will notice both of the values are same so in this case it should return true okay but the classes are different a belongs to string but b belongs to string buffer so whenever you try to compare string and string buffer using dot equals method no matter if the values are equal or indifferent, it will always give you false. But be careful when other classes are there. In this case, it will give you error that it is incompatible. Now let's talk about period class. So a zero period will be represented as zeros days. So what exactly is period? In a period, you can define a time frame like a day a month a week so if you try to create an object within java code where you pass zero days zero weeks zero months zero years and if you try to print it it will give you p zero d so you just have to remember this particular scenario where you are passing 0, 0, 0 within the off method of period class in this case when you try to print that particular object it will give you capital P, uh, O and D. A zero period will be represented as zero days. Now again, whenever you see a ternary operator MCQ within the exam, do not spend much time analyzing the code. The first thing you have to notice is that the number of question marks and colons you have. In many MCQs, I noticed that they were giving double conditions, but after that only one thing was present. So this is wrong. How exactly this works is that in operand 1, we have a condition. If the condition is true, in that case operand 2 runs. If the condition is false, in that case operand 3 runs. So it basically is like if else. Okay. So this is like if the condition is true, run this. If the condition is false, run this. So the, the thing is that even if we have nested ternary operators, even in that case, the number of question marks and number of colons should be equal. So if you see something like this, like you have two question marks and two colons, in that case, go ahead and understand the code and figure out the output. But if you see you have double question mark and one colon, error. If you see single question mark and double colon, error. Just remember the number of times the question mark should be there. 
similarly we should have colon why because if the condition is true in that case also we need few statements to run if the condition is false in that case also we need few statements to run so this is the thing you have to remember our ternary operator now final class always remember you cannot you cannot create um you cannot instantiate final classes like if you have a final class you basically cannot extend it like over here what i'm trying to do is i'm trying to create local uh, i'm trying to extend local date so what i said earlier was wrong you can create objects of final class but you cannot extend it okay so hello world cannot extend a final class so whenever you see a class that is trying to you know extend a final class this won't work now let's talk about class cast exception so there is a concept of parent and child when we try about polymorphism or when we talk about extending so over here the class a is the parent class and class b is the child class okay so what exactly you have to remember is that you can convert a child class object to a parent class object but you cannot convert a parent class object to a child class object so over here we have we, we have created a as parent class object and b as child class object what exactly we are trying to do is we are trying to convert a into b that is we are trying to convert object of parent class to object of child class in this case we will get class cast exception sub type can't refer to an object of super type assignment operator and return in many places you will be you know uh, given a question which they are trying to see that if you understand the assignment operator or not so the assignment operator does two things okay the first thing is that it assigns the value as expected and second thing it returns the same value also so if you are you know having string a equals to h e l l o in this case the if you try to print it in this case this hello will be printed or in similar manner if in a ternary operator you see assignment operator within the operands in that case also the thing that we are trying to assign will be returned so over here we have string s that is a b c d then we have int a it, which is 5 then we are trying to print s equals to hello so in this case many people you know select this as the answer s equals to hello which is wrong it is not present within the method as a string it is present as assignment operation so in this case only hello will be returned and print will only print hello then we are trying to assign 7 to a again in this case a equals to 7 won't be print because it is not a string that we are passing to print ln we are you know just doing assignment operation in this case 7 will be returned so hello and 7 will be printed now uh, see we have local date then we have local time then we have local date time okay so around this you will see many mcqs and to be frank these particular mcqs are scoring point in the exam because they are very uh, simple to understand and easy to answer like it's not much complex if you solve or understand them you will be able to answer it so just remember that in date only date is present in time only time is uh, present i'm not sure exactly about the and in local date time both of them are present it will be something like 218 04 21 t will be present to differentiate between date and time 
and your time will be here so in this case how exactly they will fool you around is that whenever you know uh, they will be trying to access the date and they will try to find out what exactly is the time but in this case time won't be present because it is a local date object and in over here they will try to figure out something related to date or they will use a method in which date is involved but again in local time only time is present so nothing related to date okay so we have just discussed these two these three things now you have to remember a special method that method is at time okay so add time is a method which combines a local date object and a local time object so in this case what exactly will happen is that over here you have to pass a date object and over here you have to pass a time object and this particular will return combinations of uh, date and time so date dot add time local time method creates a local date time instance by combining date and time parts as simple as that if you see add time method in your exam you have to remember that it is going to combine your date object and your time object we cannot create instance of list list is an interface so as i got confused before so final class and then we have interface okay so you cannot extend final class you cannot create objects of an interface these two things you have to remember one thing you cannot extend a final class you cannot create objects of an interface so list is an interface so whenever you see something like this like we are trying to create an object of list it is something that is not going to work because list is an interface now last thing so this is just a mcq which i came across and i thought to share so public class hello world correct public static void main string args correct okay then we have do system dot out dot print ln in this case it will print hello then we have while false but over here if you notice we have a semicolon at the end so in this case what will happen is that do will be executed while then we false in the case of false we have semicolon over here so in this case it will directly go out of the loop but while doing so this will be unreachable code it will won't be able to read those statements so it will throw an exception so if you want to know more about unreachable code i have talked about them within my other parts of you know these series like if you you can go to my channel and you can find the different parts of such videos over there they are not related to each other it is just that's too much of content so i have divided them into parts so just go to my channel watch other parts of the video and if you give your exam and if you you know any one of the tip that helped you do comment down thank you and if you want more notes or something you can reach out to me i will try to provide them if possible